Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today, let's answer the question, what is an API? All right, so today I want to talk about APIs and I want to talk about them in a very simple way. So those of you guys who are software developers out there, you may find this very boring the way I, I explain it, but this is more for the mere mortals out there. So the reason I, I want to talk about this today is I've been having a lot of conversations over the last couple of weeks with different clients and we talk about APIs and I talk about how we need to build an API or they want to inter integrate with other systems in their organizations and I say well do, do you know if they have an open API and they always get confused by this and sometimes sometimes we'll just continue to talk about it and they won't tell me they don't know what, what I'm talking about and then then I found out later that they're not really quite sure so today I just want to talk in a very simplistic way about what an API is you know for the mere mortals out there so what you know I'm not going to go into OAuth or or you know, web services, REST versus SOAP or anything like that. I just want to talk really basic about what uh, what an API is, a public API. So have a look at my screen here. Uh, so when I first did my first application, which was for an investment bank, it was like a VB5 app. I was a junior developer. I had an application that connected with the database and they could change records on the screen. Very, very simple. And this is what it looked like. I had a database and I had the app and all the logic for the database was kept here in the application. Now by database, for the most part when we talk about databases, we talk about a place to put your data. So most of the time we're talking about a SQL database, there's also no SQL databases, but it could also be a text file, it could be an exchange server, it could be email, it could be something like that, just some place to put where your data goes, right? And for the most part it doesn't have code there, although if we want to get nitpicky about it, you can have store procedures in your SQL database. But this one didn't. It was just connected to a database and it just showed on the screen and I had this little form based thing and all of the logic was here in the application itself. It was, it was just like one big kludge of code. It was really, really kind of nasty, right? Later on, three tiered architectures got a lot more popular, or at least they did to me. So. You know, the next couple of years I started getting more disciplined with the way I coded my applications so what we started doing is doing a business logic tier now this is still using a desktop application we're not even using web but we would have the database we'd have the database where the data goes and then we would have a business logic tier which was shareable across other applications if we wanted to but we would just use the the application itself really just the way to present it and we one of the things we called it we call it the uh, we call this the data layer the business logic layer and the presentation layer right and then later on as we started to get more web or network based we started to do we started to do this as an API so a lot of times when we talk about applications now I, I will show the same diagram to lots of clients right it's very simple where we have the application or the website here it, it communicates through the cloud and it communicates with an API and the API has all that business logic in it so in business logic to give you an example, let's say in the database, one person has one address and they can't have two addresses for whatever reason. Let's say that's like part of our app, right? So we could have something in the, a database constraint that says if you try to add something, a, a second address, it will fail. However, you could also put it here in the API. So let's say it's more conditional than that. So they say they can only have one address unless they're female. Okay, so at that point, we can have some logic here in the API that says, add person, add address, that logic can be stored here. It could also be stored in the app, depends, but if we store it here, then anything that uses it will do that. Now, I talk about a website. A lot of times it doesn't necessarily need to go through the cloud, so we could have the website here, and that feeds off the API, or the website can connect directly to the database like the old applications do. Now, to give you an example of, of a very popular API out there, or a popular app that has an API, we go to Twitter. So let's go to Twitter here. Twitter is is really good if you're just learning programming because it has an open API. It's it used to be a lot easier to use. Now you got loads of authentication that you need to go through and, and they throttle it back a little bit. But one of the things that, that Twitter allows you to do is easily integrate into your application. So you see here we got a, a standard search API. You could pass you could make a call to the database to their 
it's basically like a web page but it doesn't have an interface to it so if you pass in this URL and and the different parameters to a a web URL it will give you the response back in JSON which is a a language that we know what format it's going to be or we know how to parse it and we can put that into different fields so that's what an API is at a, at a very basic sense so let's go over here so when we talk about applications we talk about mobile applications this works the same way so we have you know, we have an Android app, we have an iOS app, and they both communicate with a database, but we don't want to connect directly with a database sitting on a server someplace because that would represent it. That would add like a security hole, but also it's just it's easier to put all that logic here. So this would be search tweets, for example, if we were if we wrote Twitter, right? So and then we could also have the website which feeds right off of that. And we have an admin site. And let's say we wanted to introduce a desktop app here. We could do that and all of that could operate on the same logic so ideally we want to have as little logic in the client application as possible and move it into the api unless it helps in terms of the performance so if we did everything like every bit of validation every bit of everything we did we had to go through the web and communicate that slows the app way down so we try to cache everything here in the applications that we can and everything like that so a lot of businesses that we work with, they, what they want to do is integrate with other systems. So, so we have this accounting system over here. Would you be able to, would our app be able to integrate with the accounting system? So I'll say, do you know if they have an API that we can communicate with? And usually they don't, they don't know, or they have to go check on it and they go check with their developers. And it's a lot of times, it's usually hit and miss. If they're like junior developers, or they don't really see the need to create an API. A lot of times there is no API. So let's go back over to my first one here. So it's basically built like this. They have a website, they have a database, it connects directly. It, there's no middle layer, there's no, there's no tiers there. So a lot, sometimes what we have to do is we have to fig, look at the database, figure out how it works if we can, and hopefully it's pretty logical. And then we build our own little API there that we can use, right? And other times, what we'll do is that they say if they do have an API, what we could do is we can either connect directly from the apps to their API, but mo more often than not, what we'll do is with their API, with our new API, we will connect to their API, and then that way we have everything just going through one tunnel there. So if I wanted to interface with Twitter, I could have our API connect through Twitter that way, or I could have the application itself connect with Twitter. And the reason we we make these decisions based on authentication. So if it's more if it's more convenient or if it makes more sense to communicate directly from the app itself to that API and get the data back and then merge it within the app or maybe even get it back and send it back through our API, then we'll do it that way. But ideally, I like personally I like to have everything in one place. So here's a here's another example. You know, we've got the Android, we got iPhone. Let's say we want to have Google API integrated. The most efficient way to do it is to have Google API going through the client applications because it handles throttling and it's a, it's a unique IP address. So you know we've done it before where we've done it through our own API. Even using Twitter, it's better to go through from their application straight to there because then they have their own usage limits for each client application. However, and it depends on the service, uh, but other times we could do that and communicate straight from that API. So, the, I'm making this for a few people that I've spoken to over the past few weeks, where every time I talk about an API, is that we need to produce an app, uh, let's talk about what is application programming interface. God, I'm terrible at this. So, an API is a programming interface. If your developers are really good, or if they're thinking in the future, like we should build this, where we have an open API because if we want to integrate other systems with that, that would be a good thing to do. And if you are commissioning a bespoke piece of software for your business, it's always good to think about this kind of stuff. If you put an API in there and the complexities your developers will tell you have to do around permissioning and making sure it's secure, it can't just be accessed by anyone, how are you going to do that? And there's lots, of, we can have several videos on the different authentication methods on that, but Today, I just wanted to go through basically what is an API. Now, for those of you guys, that de software developers out there, if there's anything that I'm missing here that you think somebody who who's just coming 
into development or somebody who's thinking about getting an app commission for themselves you think that they should know please put it down in the comments and that is it for today i'll talk to you guys again tomorrow